hey, I'm excited for you. And uh, Brother Keaston's preached for us before. It's not his first time preaching, but it's been a while since he's preached for us. And I sure love Brother Keaston. You know, I like to tell the story about it. I didn't lead Keaston to Christ, but uh, but out visiting, trying to uh, fill a van up on a particular uh, Saturday that the Lord kind of spurred me to maybe challenge the other van. We had an existing van route, and, and I was driving past a Enterprise rental car uh, place, and I saw three 15-passenger uh, vans in the parking lot, and, uh, and, and just something sp- spurred me. And I did a U-turn, I went back, and I rented one of the vans. And then I uh, contacted uh, the, our uh, guys that are working on the van and said, Hey, listen, I rented a van. I'm going to fill it today, and, uh, and, and, and then I'm going to need, uh, I'm gonna need some um, uh, more people, uh, more room, so I'll, I'll use what you got left over in your van. And they kind of laughed at me, and I said, I, I said, I said, unless you can get out there and get it filled, you know, I mean, you might want to try that. And, you know, we kind of a little bantered back and forth, and then, well, hey, then I had to go out and do it. And it was it was already Saturday, you know, morning, and uh, and then I, I got out, man, and I didn't have anybody to go with me, and I knocked a door, and I knocked Keiston's door, and, uh, and he was a little bit sheepish about it, and he said, "Nah, I'm, you know, I'm I'm good, you know," and, and all of that, and I said, "Man, come on, man, I I listen, I'm a pastor at the church, and I'm gonna lose my job if I don't get any visitors, man. I, they're gonna fire me. I gotta get some visitors in here," and he was like, eh, "No, it's all right, you know," and and then I left. You know, and I went down and I and I did sign up. Had another couple sign up with a couple kids. They were gonna come and and, and but then I got a phone call and I used to carry the church cell phone with me back then. And uh, and he's like, uh, yeah, my, my name's uh, Keaton Edwards and. And uh, the pastor was just at my church, at my door a little while ago, and, and I told him I wouldn't come. I'll come, you know. And, and I was like, man, really, is this that? I said, well, I'll be there to get you. And Keisha was my first pickup because that allowed me to have, uh, you know, a, somebody, another adult in the van with me. And, uh, and he's been coming. We, we launched balloons that day. It, we had a balloon launch that next day for our seventh anniversary. And, uh, and here we are 22 years later. Keaston's still coming, went off to Hiles Anderson College, spent four years there, graduated. And, uh, and I sure love Keaston and appreciate his faithfulness. He's going to uh, preach for us. You come, Brother Keaston, all right? And uh, now you pay attention. I sent messages to Brother Wilkerson, told me you're going to be preaching tonight. If you tune in, go ahead and record that. What's that? There's a song. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to pray before you preach. Yeah, I got you. Does it make you feel a little better? Yeah. He's getting real tensed up, man. He got, you out of order, Pastor. You out of order. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we do love you. God, I pray for Brother Keaston tonight. We thank you for Brother Aaron and the message that we received tonight. And Lord, now I pray that you would bless Brother Keaston as he brings a word to us. I pray, Father, that your hand be upon him. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the young folks that will sing for us now. God, I pray that you would uh, speak through them as they speak to us through song. And Father, we'll give the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Out of his great love, he picked me up, set my feet on a solid rock. Out of his great love, I've learned the meaning of salvation. Out of his great love. Love, he picked me 
y'all. Thank y'all, church. Thank you, preacher. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. I, lo I love y'all. I mean that. And yes, uh, thank you, young people, you know, for that song. That's, that, that was my life. Out of his great love, he picked me up. Amen. And uh, I tell this story often. A preacher knocked on my door. I was 20-something. You know, I went to a Christian school, but I got away from God. And I wasn't even saved. I'll say more about that. But, uh, you know, living out there in the Curtis Bay, Brooklyn area, some of y'all know that area, but, uh, you know, very heavily, you know, and uh, God picked me up. And I don't, de I don't deserve to be here. I am what I am by the grace of God and God's grace. And don't ever forget that, y'all. It's God's grace. God saved us. Let's, let's not get used to that. And I, I thank you. Thank you, Brother Aaron, for that message about music. We, we don't need this new stuff. On, Stick right. with the old stuff. Stick Amen. with the old time religion. Don't change. Don't change Bibles. We don't need to change. That's right. You know, that, that's not producing the next generation. Right. You know, we're seeing our country dying and going to hell. We don't need to change. Amen. And I, I, I thank y'all. And uh, well, um, we'll go to Psalm 34, 8. Psalm 34, 8, one verse. And uh, how many, now, before I begin, how many of y'all ever heard me preach? Raise your hand. How many of y'all never heard me preach? How many of y'all, you just don't care, you just want to eat pizza? Raise your hand. I'm going to see where you're at. I'm going to see all the backslidden people. All right. Psalm 34, 8, one verse. All right. Oh, y'all there? All right. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. I'm going to read another verse. First, Chron First Chronicles 16, 34. You don't have to turn to it. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. Now, for those of you that, that was looking for me to rip face tonight, that's not going to happen. I hate to disappoint you. <laughs> Sorry, that's not going to happen. Tonight's going to be more of a testimony um, on the goodness of God. And uh, this is going to be, this may sound biased. This may, I'm, I'm going to speak in third person. But I remember the first sermon I, I preached, it was at the storefront. Yeah. I had not listened to that since. I had incorrect English. All my Miss Lori and where's Miss, Miss Joanne? Is she in here? Some of my teachers, oh, there you are. And Miss Carol, y'all will flunk me. Y'all say, where did that boy go to school at? That's improper English. Where did he go to school? But uh, this is going to be why God has been good to Keystone Edwards. Now, you can put your, put your name in there. Why God has been good to us. Let's pray, please. Father in heaven, Lord, I be honest with you, Lord, I don't deserve to be up here. Lord, I'm sure there's other men that ought to be up here. Lord, when pastor asked me weeks ago, you know, if I'll be willing to preach, I thought, are you kidding me? You know, there should be other people. But, Lord, that was in you asked me, God. And, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I'm unworthy, and, Lord, you're worthy. And, God, help me, God, as I give a testimony. God, I, we need you. We need your power. Thank you, Lord, for today, the people that got saved. Thank you, Lord, for Brother Aaron. The message that he preached, also pastor preached this morning. I pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Why God has been good to the keys to that verse? Number one, he saved me. He's my Amen. Savior. Jesus Christ is my Savior. Um, I told y'all I went to a Christian school, but you know what? I wasn't sure I was saved. I went off to Hiles Anderson College in 2008, but I got saved during my sophomore year at Hiles Anderson College. I was struggling with salvation. I thought, you know, okay, maybe I've done this, but you know, I got my friend told me, Keisha, you've got to get salvation nailed down. And so I got nailed down November 1st, 2009, got saved, but I was struggling. He saved me. Amen. Do you have a, do you have a, time and a place where God saved you? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? You say, oh, why is it that we always got to talk about salvation? Because hell's real, y'all. And we all be telling folks about hell. Right. And there's a world out there dying and going to hell, and you and I all be spreading the goodness. But we can't do that if you don't know for sure if you've been saved. And I, I encourage and I beg you tonight, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, he wants to save you. He loves you. But we got to realize we're all sinners. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your background is. I don't care if you're the greatest person, rich, poor. You know, the Bible says, according to the Bible, we die without Christ, we die and go to hell. Right. 
But we got to know Christ as our Savior. Come on. And God Amen. loves us. That's right. Hey, listen, the blood of Jesus, it's the blood of Christ. Amen. It's not Amen. our good works. It's not going to church. It's not growing up in a good home. You can do all those things. You, it's not going to a Christian school. I, mean, I, I thought I got this thing nailed out, but I didn't. I was on my way to hell. Come on. But I had to get that thing settled. Come on. Hey, listen, I, two things I'll send you to hell is pride and procrastination. Ooh. Pride and procrastination was sending you to hell. And the reason why, the Holy Ghost was convicting me. I was under conviction for months, Pastor Arkan, while I was a freshman in college. I thought, okay, maybe the devil's fight me. But I get that thing nailed out because I didn't want to, because I was procrastinating. I thought, okay, I don't want to be embarrassed. Friend, listen to me. If you're here tonight, you're, you don't know Christ as your Savior, don't leave out of here. I beg you. Don't, you don't know. We don't know. People are dying and going to hell. You, 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 you know, we, we don't know. Something can, I don't wish this on anybody, but something could happen. But let me just say this. Hey, listen, Frank, God's been good to me because he's been my Savior. Now, amen. if you're sitting here tonight, we serve a good God, amen? Amen. amen? amen. Hey, listen, we use the phrase we're doing better because we are doing better than we deserve. Amen. Hey, you could be living in another country. If you live in America, God's been good to you. Amen. If you have a church to go to, God's been good to you. If you're able to get up... If you're able, if you have an able body, God's been good to you. I'm, I'm thinking of two friends right now that are battling cancer. Yeah. About, about my age, they're battling cancer right now. And, uh, you know, it, hey, listen, if you got a place to live, you got food to eat, clothes on your back, God's been very good to you, okay? We have no right to complain. But God wants to save you as well. He's my Savior. Number two, why God has been good to Keystone Edwards? He's been my supplier. Amen. God has supplied for us. God has met our needs. First, Second Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always have all su sufficiency in all things. Mm. Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all your need, not your wants, but your need, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. John 1, 12. But as many as receive him... To, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Hey, listen, friend. God wants to meet our needs. Do we believe that God can take care of us? Do we yes. believe that God is bigger than the economy? You know, I would sit back and hear stories, you know, of preachers, especially, you know, when I was in college, preacher, they would, talk, they would talk about, you know, oh, yeah, how God met this need, how God met that need, how God came through, how God did this situation. And I thought to myself, you know, I need to get some stories of my own. Mm. God's no debtor to us. You know, Malachi, and, and by the way, if you're not tithing, mm -hmm. I said if you're not tithing, and by the way, he didn't tell me to say that, I'm saying it, so if you're going to get mad, get mad with me, Come but on. if you're not tithing, you're not giving to missions, you, you know, hey, listen, don't expect God to meet your needs. Listen, right. you, you heard preachers say many times, the, the, the best way to get, give yourself out, give, and this, this has been a giving church, because there's a war out there, but God wants to meet our needs, our, God's not broke. If we just trust him, do we, do, we, do we really believe that he can meet? Hey, listen, I'm, I'm just like you. You know, you, you get to watching the news. You're looking at your 401K. You know, you're hearing about the economy is going to crash. And, you know, you get, to get worried, and you wonder if God's going to come through for you. You know, you see your, all these celebrities with their nice lifestyle, their bling bling, their nice homes. Yeah. You know, you get to looking at that. And, you know, what the devil will put... Put in your mind, oh, God can't take care of you. God can't put food on your table. God, God can't look out for you. Hey, listen, friend, we, we've seen God work here. I, I think about during this whole, you know, we're just coming out of a, a deadly pandemic. You know, how, folk, how you, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. And I was out of work. Some of y'all know I was out of work during that time. Yeah. But you know what? God provided another job, job for us. Amen. Hey, listen, God owns Wall Street. Why are we worried? You know, all this stuff, you know, when we all get, when Jesus Christ comes back, we all go, hey, all this is going to burn up one day. That's so right. God owns it all. Come on. That's right. So he, number one, God, God saved me. Do you have a time and place where God saved you? Number two, the reason why God's been good to us, he's been my supplier. Number three, why God has been good to Keystone Edwards? Hey, listen, he's, been my, he's my sovereign. He's my ruler. Amen. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good. And say it was good to them that love God, to them who are to call according to his purpose. Hey, listen, uh, Colossians 1.17 says, by him all things consist. Amen. Genesis 1.1 says, in the beginning God created 
the heaven and earth. We live in a world today that is not convinced that God is the creator. Right. Oh, I mean, sad to say, we have Christians that do not believe that God uh, created them and loved them. That's right. God never intended for us to be our own gods. I mean, if you read in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, you know, Satan. Satan don't care what we do as long as we don't acknowledge the true God, almighty God. He wants us to be our own God. That's right. Hey, listen, God's the supreme. He's our ruler. He's our king. The world right now is trying to push God out. I mean, you see all around you. You can't mention God anymore. You can't mention God at this place. You know, you can mention everywhere else. I got newsflash for you. Buddha's dead. Muhammad's dead. But we serve a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. And he's the ruler. He's the creator. And we're all going to stand before him. Amen? That's right. Come on. He's sovereign. Is God sovereign? Do, do we believe that God knows what he's doing? See, Romans 8, 28. And by the way, let me say this. It's not best to quote Romans 8, 28, especially to somebody that had a tragedy happen to them. You know, you don't want to go around quoting that. You know, all things work together for good. But we do know that all things are if we believe that God is sovereign. I'm not saying, you know, we get a, a phone call, oh, that's good, or we get some bad, oh, that's great. But you know what? Our God, he's sovereign. He loves us. Number one, God, why God has been good to keep the nervous, number one, he's my savior. Number two, he's my supplier. Number three, he's my sovereign. Number four, why God has been good to keep the networks, number one, he's been my sustainer. Isaiah 26, 3, that will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Psalm 55, 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. Psalm 119, 116, uphold me according to thy word that I may live. The word sustain means to support physically and mentally. You know, God's been my support, and he's been my friend. He's been there for me. And God has been there for you. You know, I'm looking around the room, and I, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about many of you. Some of you have been through trials. You know, God, God weeps when we when we weeps. God, this book right here. And by the way, let me stop and say this to you. Lean, lean on God. Amen. Everybody, you got to lean on That's this book. Right. Listen, on. friend, you're not going to make it without God. That's right. We need God. Amen. I, 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 I don't talk about it much. And by the way, I appreciate this church for praying. But some of y'all know, back six years ago, our family went through a, a, a very trying time. You know, my mother, yeah, and preacher, you remember on. this. Right. We were trying to get in this building. My mother went through, had, was diagnosed with an aggressive brain tumor, yeah. and she had to have surgery, and we didn't know what to do. Right. And she had to go through chemo and radiation, and she was in and out of the hospital. Yeah. And, and she, and it, it was grave. We didn't know, my, my father was there with my mother every night, in and out. You know, we, I mean, when you, let me tell you something, when you get news like that over, oh, and some of y'all been there, overthrow your faith. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, you question things. But you know what? God sustained us during that time. My niece is sitting back here. We, we went through a, a very trying time. And I'll be honest with you, I, I became very despondent. You know, I didn't want to be around anybody. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to push through. You know, you hear about other people, but once your own mama, you know, and you're trying to figure out some things. But you know what? God, God sustained us. And God helped her. And God helped all of us. And God has sustained this church. We've been through some, folks, we've been through some tough times together. Yeah. You know, you stay at church for a long time. You, we, we've been through some stuff together. And God, I don't know what you're going through tonight, but God wants to sustain you. God wants to help you. Friend, this is a wicked, I, I don't think I have to tell y'all, we're living in a crazy world. Yes. I've never seen it like it is before, Come on. what we're dealing with. And, friend, we got we to gotta have a book. we got to have every word Bible, Amen. else we're not going to make it. Come on. You know, people, That's the good. suicide rate is high. Yes. You know, there's a war out there that, that they need God. Hey, listen, friend. God wants to help. God, God's my savior. Now I got to hasten here. Hey, listen, friend. Why God has been good to us, he's my supplier. Hey, why God has been good to us, he's my sustainer. He's my sovereign. And I, last of all, he's my security. Mm -hmm. Psalm 91, 1. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall hide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Hey, listen, friends, safety is of God. Think about times God looked out for you in, in situations. I, I told you, we, we live down in the city. You know, Curtis, some of y'all know about Curtis Bay, you know, drugs and, and gangs and over there. But you know what? God looked out for us. God protected me. Yeah. He protected my family. He protected all of us. If we just stop and meditate on the goodness of God, 
We won't be complaining. Right. We won't be griping. We won't be having a cantankerous attitude. You know, trials come, things come in. And here's the danger about being saved for a long time. You know, you, you've been saved for a long time, it, it becomes an old hat to you. It becomes mundane. Herbert Cobb preached that uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Yeah, come on. And we're not careful, friend. Our hearts should become cold. You know, we're dealing with people, you know, cold people throughout the week at work. We got to be careful. Hey, listen, let's, let's get back. Think about the goodness of God. I, I challenge us, including myself, think about how God has been good to you. Thank you.